now what I'd like to do is introduce a friend of mine. Um, you know, they say that Republicans and Democrats can't work together, and I, I can tell you that's, there's some truth to that. I've seen it. Uh, you're right here where we stand in this city today. If you go to a Republican's office and tell them you've been to a Democrat's office, they're mad with you, and vice versa. We got a, a culture in this country today where people aren't working together. This is an issue, health care. Health care for Mr. Wahab here, that veteran, that should not be a problem or a debatable issue. That man should be provided emergency care. Amen. Nobody should be able to take emergency care away from his community or him, especially if a hospital can be profitable. That's wrong. So anyway, we have a situation here with this health care issue with Reverend Barber and myself have been able to work together. And I've got to give him credit. A lot of my Republican friends don't like the fact that I, I promote him and I, and I speak up for him so much. And the reason is, when, when we had our hospital closed, I held a rally, about 300 people came. Then I got to the Vidant people, and they told me basically to get lost. They told me they told everybody they were going to close the hospital when they took it over, which was a lie. But, but when nobody would help, the Republicans didn't come, the Democrats didn't come, our legislators didn't come, Reverend Barber came, and he is the reason we're still moving on today. And he is the reason, part of the reason we're standing here today, because I sure wouldn't be in the middle of this mess if he hadn't got me. So anyway, I want to introduce Reverend Barber to say some remarks as well. Reverend Barber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My daughter came here to Congress when we were fighting to get the Affordable Care Act passed. She has a pre-existing condition. She has a brain condition. And I cannot forget what she asked one senator, or a couple of them, when they were kind of waffling about the ins and outs of the bill and whether or not they were going to support a bill that would guarantee that insurance companies could not deny people because of pre-existing condition. And she looked at them in the eye. I think she was um, a teenager then. I know she was. And she said this, the real question is, do you want me to die? I didn't ask that question. A lobbyist didn't ask that question. But a young teenage girl with a pre-existing condition said that's really the issue when it comes to the Affordable Care Act, when it comes to Medicaid expansion, when it comes to saving rural hospitals. The question is not a Democratic question. It's not a Republican question. It's a deeply moral question. That is, do you want people to live or do you want people to die? 